Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission worker. My guest today is Callie Buchholz. Callie is someone that is actually transitioning uh, at the time that we're recording this, she is going to be on the full-time team with Support Raising Solutions, and we are excited to have her. So, Callie, welcome once again to the SRS Podcast. Thank you. It's, it's starting to feel like family already. <laughs> good, good. We're so glad. We're so glad, and, and that's for a variety of reasons. Of course, one of the reasons is that it's just going to be good to have you down in Arkansas with us and away from the Chicago cold. Uh, Amen. But Ooh. also just because you, you bring some great perspective and uh, I'm excited to, to have you kind of come in and help us uh, tool and retool and develop different resources with SRS. So tell us as you're, as you're kind of stepping into this, um, we've interviewed you before. I've had you on the podcast before. Uh, tell our listeners though, a little bit about you and, uh, once again, a little bit how you, you actually left Arkansas and now you're moving back to Arkansas. What, what happened in all of that? God. God is what happened all the way through. <laughs> yeah. He just kept opening doors. I left Arkansas back in 2012. God opened a door for me to go overseas. And it was one of those crazy opportunities that I never saw coming but couldn't say no to. And from that point, he's just kept opening doors that... I never anticipated. I did not anticipate working in support raising and loving it and being passionate about it, but this is the journey God has taken me on. So from Germany, I moved to Chicago to start working on the admin side of my organization, Peach Beyond. And then that's where I started the partnership with SRS. I'm from Arkansas, so moving back closer to family and warmer winters was always in the back of my mind as something that I would love to do. And God started opening more doors to make it possible. And so that, that is what's happening now to keep pursuing this passion. Awesome. Awesome. And then, you know, the, the term resources director or director of resources. I mean, that sounds really fancy. What, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> uh, probably a little bit of everything. And I'll know... I'll have a better answer for that question when I actually get there. But in a nutshell, it's looking at everyone in all these different organizations are looking at, hey, we need help solving this problem. How do we help our staff with this? Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to coaching, when it comes to follow up, when it comes to we need um, kind of a structure to track all this. Mm -hmm. Can you help us figure out how to do that? And that's what I love developing those processes, looking at what currently exists, what needs to be developed, how can we put that all together? Well, one of my dreams, and, and uh, I'll, I'll maybe be clear, you and I are going to interact a lot, but I'm, I'm not going to be like your, you know, your boss in the daily that's like assigning you tasks, but I'm going to let other people help with that for sure. But one of the things that I'm really helpful for, ha having done trainings uh, internationally, is uh, my, my, my hope, and I'm not promising everybody on the podcast that's listening, I'm not promising you this is happening anytime soon, but my hope and dream is we can develop resources particularly for international uh, people that are moving into full-time ministry, but they're coming out of a, a community or a region where the local church really hasn't been that involved in mobilizing and sending missionaries and, and trying to develop resources to help internationals um, explain to, to pastors and, and churches that, hey, there's a partnership here, help send us out. No, we're not trying to steal your congregants and start another church. We're we're doing great commission work. And I have all sorts of thoughts and dreams about how we might do that. But at the end of the day, Kelly, I need someone with your skill set <laughs> to, to actually have some sort of product to, to offer our brothers and sisters that are in that context. Exactly, Erin. That is a huge need and something I'm really excited to look at. How can we grow that direction? How can we think more globally? And it's really neat to... I don't hear those needs from around the world to have that vision so much bigger than ourselves. Amen. Amen. Well, for our purposes today, I know that we wanted to talk 
about money and, and, and everybody might think, well, of course, this is a support raising podcast. You're going to talk about money, but really from the context of newsletters, um, it's a, we've all seen newsletters that are, well, let's just be kind and call them terrible. And <laughs> I don't know if that's very kind, but it's sure. Not, but, it, but no, that's kind because <laughs> there, there might be other terms for them. Uh, and then we've seen good newsletters and a lot of times newsletters, they, they might be a bit formulaic, but they don't all look the same. They don't all communicate the same thing. And anybody that's been through an SRS boot camp knows that we're very, very strong on urging people to have a vision driven newsletter and it needs to tie in. And of course we talk a lot more about that in the boot camp. But for the sake of, of this conversation, Callie, I wanted to ask you just to help explain to the podcast listeners a little bit more about talking about money in a newsletter. Should they, shouldn't they? If they do, how should they? How should they not? There, there's a lot of lot of uh, possibility for, for discussing this topic. And honestly I see a need for growth in this area. I, I, I'm on quite a few different people's newsletter email. Uh, you know, it comes, they, they email me their newsletter. Sometimes they didn't even ask me, they stuck me on their list and I start getting it. And uh, other times there are people I want to read those newsletters. So I get a lot of ministry leaders newsletters. So I'm just going to kick it to you first of all and, and say, all right, so the topic is newsletters and money and talking about them newsletters. How are people supposed to approach that, Callie? Well, I would say one of the first big problems with money and newsletters is that people group them all into one letter and it's just their newsletter. Whether they're needing to talk about money, whether they're needing to talk about updates, it's all happening in that same vehicle. Mm -hmm. Whereas it can be a lot more helpful to clearly delineate them that you've got your newsletters, which is your updates, it's your prayer requests, it's your talking about your ministry, and then you've got your ask letters, where you're specifically talking about financial need, inviting people to respond. Usually it's hopefully a part of a much larger process where you're talking with people, meeting with people, not leaving it in a letter, but those are two different types of letters. Um, and it's when people start combining those into one letter that actually both purposes get very, very watered down mm -hmm. because suddenly you've got your newsletter and you're talking about God and the mission and what is happening, but it's always ending with, and we have this financial need if you'd like to give. So suddenly the vision doesn't stand on its own. It's only a vehicle to introduce a financial need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and it's tucked it, away you know, kind of at the end of the newsletter after mm -hmm three or four or five pages of trying to like prove your ministry's worth. And again, I apologize if this isn't something gracious enough. I've just seen too many of these where it's look, 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 but this only happens if you give, 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 give. And there's suddenly it's like the newsletter uh, for some people and everybody does this, but, but sometimes it, it's almost as if people believe that their newsletter is a, well, it's a fundraising tool. Like it's a primary fundraising tool and that's not necessarily what, what we what we know to be true is it right your newsletter is most often your key communication piece with your ministry partners but the key information that you're trying to communicate with them is not your financial need it's what you ask them to partner with you for which is the work of god mm -hmm. and you can't ever miss that that's the the heartbeat of what you want them to take away more than anything else is that God is at work. They are a part of it. Hear this wonderful story. Mm. And I realize this probably pushes in on people's comfort zone a little bit. In fact, somebody may have already turned off the podcast. So <laughs> I apologize for that. And someone might even disagree with us. So I want to be really clear. We're not we're not trying to, to pick on anyone. We're not trying to say that you can never, ever, ever talk about finances in a newsletter. We're not saying that. However, Callie, I think you and I are in agreement here. It's not your primary fundraising tool. And if you're not careful, people will not read your newsletter because they think, oh, this is just, this is just Callie asking me for money again, like she does every couple few months. Right. And then on the flip side, when you do have a need that you're needing to communicate that you're wanting to introduce in a letter, if it is 
always, if asking for money is always a part of your newsletter, suddenly when it is a more urgent topic, you don't have any way to communicate that urgency because it's always there. It's nothing new. It's nothing special. This is just what you always say. You always are asking for a response for people to give. Right. So in separating your regular newsletter from a specific ask letter, you make them both stand out a lot more. For instance, if you're using your newsletter properly, that you're communicating those life change stories, you're sharing the ministry impact with all your ministry partners, and then there comes a time that you need to raise an increased support. You've got maybe your year end ask mm -hmm. or a particular season that you need to increase your support. You can communicate that in a special letter saying, hey, this is the impact you've been having, but also right now we want to take a special time to talk about our financial need, how you can be a part of it, and when we're going to be communicating to you next. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it stands out. They notice it. Yeah. That's a big difference than it just always being in the background of every letter. It, it just becomes white noise. Yeah, it really does. It, it, there's less impact to it. So that might beg a, a question for some then is like, well, wait a minute. What am I supposed to talk about if I'm not mentioning money? We, we need money. Why wouldn't I bring up money? What am I supposed to talk about? So uh, give, if you would, Kelly, give, give a couple of, of ideas or thoughts or direction uh, to, to help people understand your newsletter isn't just a, a fundraising tool, if, if it is one. Right. When you invite people to partner with you, you're inviting them to take part of the work that God is doing. You're the person that's actually full-time in ministry and doing that work. All your partners aren't there in the office with you. They aren't there in the field with you. They aren't the one having those conversations with people sharing Christ. So your communication with them is the main way that they are involved in what's happening. The main way that they know their financial investment, their prayer investment, their support of you, the impact that it's having. Mm. Without that communication, that partnership isn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, um, that pe people rely on that and that's what they want to hear about. And if they're, if they are praying regularly and they are giving regularly, then they want to know how to pray. <laughs> they want to know what God has done since the last time you gave them a prayer request. That's more of a motivation for people to read your newsletter. Whereas if you bring up finances all the time, in your newsletter, that actually might be a, a D motivation that, or D motivator that that might actually kind of keep people from wanting to pay attention when you do send something, can't it? Absolutely. If you love to read, we have an entire blog article archive on support raising from biblical encouragement to practical tips to stories and personal experiences. Meanwhile, there's different articles that are more along the lines of shaping culture, elevating training, and building infrastructure so that you can multiply your coaching within your missions organization. Either way, you might want to go check out some of our articles at supportraisingsolutions.org slash blog. I want to interrupt this podcast for a brief heads up. This is Steve Shadrach, author of The God Ask. Support Raising Solutions is running a contest to win an SRS swag pack. Go check out our past podcast episode number 29 to get details on how you can get involved and possibly win some fun support raising solutions swag, including a hundred dollar gift card. So when people are talking about finances in a newsletter, and we're not saying never, ever, ever don't do it ever, 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 but we are saying be pretty careful, you know, be, be, be rare with it. Uh, give us a good example, Callie, of what might be, hey, here's, here's, a, here's a particular special thing that, that you could do and, and a way to do it that's not, not just a, another, oh, no, oh, by the way, we're still poor because you don't give enough, you know, <laughs> nothing like that, but more of a, you give us more of like a concrete example, make one up if you want to. Two examples that I use myself for a letter when it comes to increasing support. The first one is at the end of the year, the year end ask. Mm -hmm. It's something that a lot of organizations will teach about or talk about the idea that at the end of the year, November and December, people are usually giving a large amount of donations. And so communicating 
what they could do and how they could give to you, it can be really, really effective. Mm -hmm. I believe about 25% of all charitable donations happen at that time of year. Right. So it's very specific. You are communicating them for a very specific reason. It's not just we are continually, constantly underfunded and we need help. <laughs> um, it's much more purposeful and intentional. Yeah. Yeah. And quite honestly, we're not saying that you shouldn't have a giving link. You know, we're, we're, you can have some passive information at the, at the bottom of your newsletter. In fact, we encourage you always have your, your, your communication, like, you know, your, maybe it's your, your email or your, your, where you can be messaged or whatever else, like always have that there, always have a link where people can give if they, if they want to hunt for it very minimally but don't always, you know, put, put it with a, just a general, well, here's a for instance I've seen more than once, or perhaps you have too. We still need monthly supporters. Sign up here. That's, mm -hmm. uh, th th that almost kind of makes it look like you, you're running off and, and doing a work that you're not actually prepared to do, doesn't it? Right. And there's a big difference between having just contact information, a link, where to send in a gift in a footer, and actually asking people, would you please do this now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which if anyone's been to a, a good support raising training, whether it's SRS boot camp or something else, they're going to train you, God willing, on uh, really having an understanding that that face-to-face -face invitation, uh, a well, well done presentation slash conversation, that's gonna carry a whole lot more weight than a well-written letter or newsletter ever will. You might get one or two or, or three people that respond well to a newsletter, but, but we're not finding that that's how most people that are in full-time ministry with any sort of longevity, that's how not how most of them actually raise and, and maintain a support team with consistent giving over the long haul. That, that's not a letter. That's a relationship. Right. That's a conversation. That's a vision casting. That's an invitation. Mm -hmm. And, and too often the newsletter, it's kind of viewed as a shortcut of, oh, maybe this will bring in a few more bucks this month, but that's just a Band-Aid. Right. And that's where an increased letter can have a role if it's part of a strategy and a plan, mm -hmm. not as a way to just tack on, hey, we need a little more. Let's just throw this in the letter all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend that was in East Africa. He's from the United States. And due to all sorts of travel challenges and, and things like that, um, he actually reached a point where he did need an increase. And this is the only person I've ever known that's, that's gotten this, by the way. So please don't take the, what I'm about to say is, as directions for everybody to do. <laughs> this is not what I'm telling everybody to do. I, I think most of the time, if you're going to ask for an increase, you're far better off coming back and sitting down with someone face to face. However, in this particular instance, this guy really did a great job of staying connected with his prayer and financial support team. And, and it wasn't just a newsletter thing. He reached out, he, he had relationships, even though he was living and working full-time in East Africa, he had a regular, normal part of his week where he really was staying connected with his supporters and, and not being distracted from the rest of his ministry. And he reached a point where he did need to raise, I don't remember the amount exactly. I, I seem to think it was like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month. And he did that via email. And it worked, which is amazing. But but within that too, it wasn't a big newsletter. Hey everybody, I need everyone to raise their support by 15% this month. Please do that. You know, it wasn't that. It was personal. He probably texted people in advance and said, Hey, I'm going to send you a personal email. Please pray over it. I mean, he, he was very intentional and they were personalized emails and, and it explained uh, a little bit about how God was blessing and inviting people to make a change and it actually worked really, really well for him. But again, that wasn't just this, this big, everybody's going to read the newsletter and respond type situation. It, there was relationship. There was, there was personal communication and if we're honest, newsletters, they're not really personal communication, are they? Right. And that can be really, really frustrating as workers and um, working in ministry. You're sending out all this information. It can feel very one-sided. Um, and trying to work to keep that relationship existing and growing and thriving, it has to go beyond just that form newsletter to yeah. connect personally, to have 
that two-way street as much as possible so that when you do need to ask for an increase, when you do need to, to have people partner and financially meet new needs, you have that equity of relationship built up. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about special projects, though? So I'm not talking about someone's support, but let's say you work in an orphanage and there's a need for shoes. And it's, I mean, it really is a special uh, short term need. And you're not necessarily looking to hit up, uh, you know, a bunch of people for it. You're not trying to, you're not trying to, to raise a bunch of ongoing personal support. How would you broach that in, in a newsletter? I still think your end goal is to make things, make all the communication as personal as possible. It can be a really great strategy to introduce that idea in a newsletter. I would look at identifying, is this a letter that's really going out to everyone or to specific people that have a capacity, that have a passion that would really identify well with this need. I know I have ministry partners that have told me we can't give monthly, but if you have a special need, let us know. We'd love to help in that way. Mm -hmm. Having those specific people means it is going to be a more personal letter. You are going to be talking with them and following up personally. It isn't a blanket ask, even, mm -hmm. even for a special project, because the more personal an ask is, the better response will be. And that's true across the board. Yeah. Yeah. And I completely agree. And I also realize that there are exceptions. I, I'm on a, I'm on a, a couple of different newsletter lists for missionaries that my wife and I support. And even within that, every now and then they will throw out. I mean, it's a, it's a jump ball. It's a general thing. It's not the focus of their entire newsletter. It's kind of like a little aside, maybe 20% that said, if you're interested, we have a special thing we're trying to do right now to help this person in this particular situation. Uh, if you'd like to do something, you know, please contact us. Like it's a very light ask. It's not over the top. And, and my buddy's actually, I mean, he's, he's told me that God has blessed a number of ways through those little things. Uh, but historically their problem is they, they did those too often. Almost mm -hmm. every newsletter they had one of those. So it was never its own special newsletter or it was, or there was one in every newsletter and it lost its effect. And so over time they've really matured in their support raising process where, you know, they do all their, their personal support. That's one-to-one -one meetings. That's inviting people to join their team. But when they actually have like little special projects, it's not in every single newsletter. It's every now and then. And it is something cool. I mean, it's something to help someone uh, do something specifically that's not even in their family. You, you see it, it fits into their vision. It fits into their ministry goals, separate of their personal need. And they get some pretty cool gifts every now and then to do some really, really great things for the gospel, for the kingdom. And no longer is it a distraction from the rest of their, their financial needs. They've really, they've really come up with a much better concept of not just what are the needs, but how do we communicate and let people know about them? They're, they're very intentional. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah. Intentionality. I think that's probably one of the biggest things when it, when you're looking at when you talk about finances in your communication, in your newsletters, it's not something that you always attach at the bottom with an ask. It's not always just a little diagram in your newsletter, but looking at what is your plan? What is your strategy? What are you trying to accomplish? And how are you going to do that well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you as a listener are thinking to yourself, but I'm always in need. I just need enough to get through this next month, or I just need enough to get through this next season. I just, in love, I just want to encourage you to rethink your current strategy. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean you're not called to ministry. There, there's no attack here. And yet, uh, I would say that the, the chances are you, you might need to grow. I'm glad you're listening to this podcast. Continue to listen to some other ones, but also maybe get some additional training. Uh, if you've never been through an SRS boot camp, give it a shot. Or maybe you haven't gone to one in five years or four years, or maybe you need to go through it again. I had a friend who recently went through a boot camp uh, for his second time in, I think, over five or six years. And he said, you know what? I, I can't believe how much I, I forgot. I I'm really glad I did this again. It, it really grew me up and matured me a little bit. And some of my next steps I need to have for my next season of ministry and, and, and being a fully funded missionary. So there's no judgment and there's no loss in going, Hey, you need to grow up in this area. 
because the reality is we don't want you to be constantly be bogged down by finances. Finances are a reality. It's something that along with, you know, more than anything else, God's leading, but also prayer support. You, you need financial support and we want you to thrive in that. And so uh, please do not feel beat down. If you feel like you're listening to this podcast and, and Callie and I are saying you're doing it all wrong because that's not our heart, but our heart is for you to be a spiritually healthy, vision driven, fully funded, great commission worker. And so we encourage you get additional training find a coach from somebody who's fully funded, who has stayed fully funded, get help that there, there's not weakness in that. In, in reality, actually there's strength in realizing that maybe you need to take some next steps. I'm sure you'd agree, Callie. Oh yeah. And I hope that in this, you hear that vision of the freedom that comes when you are fully funded, fully funded to the extent you don't have to have that burden of constantly asking Mm -hmm. to say, oh, I can make a plan for when there is a special need, for when there's a project, and at that point talk about it. Instead of having that concern, that anxiety, that worry always hovering over you and just really weighing you down, my dream for everyone in ministry would be that they are in ministry with the freedom and that kind of lighthearted approach that I think God calls us to because he he is a God that provides fully. He is a God that gives joy and passion and fruit, not mm-hmm. limited. We do not have a limited God, but one who is vast beyond all measure. And I hope that we can have that vision in front of us when we look at our approach to being funded. Yeah, yeah. Well, Callie, once again, uh, it's so good to have you on the podcast. Uh, I know that speaking on behalf of, of Mark Wilson and Sue Osborne and Jessica Wood and John Patton and Steve Shadrach, we're all super excited <laughs> to have you joining us down in Northwest Arkansas uh, very soon. Probably by the time this gets published, you'll already live in the area where we're all at. So thank you for your time today and thank you for uh, continuing to, to help us in, in equipping ministry leaders. Uh, And hey, ministry leader, we don't know everybody that listens to this, but you're our passion. We we want you to be spiritually healthy, vision driven, fully funded for the kingdom of God. And so we we hope that this podcast is a blessing to you. If you could help us with one thing, make sure you have subscribed to it, but also encourage your friends and people you know that who live and raise and live off support. We we want to help others as well. So Callie, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.